As Alistair mentioned earlier, I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about my first year in Korea. I'm not as an English teacher, which I think makes it a little bit unique from uh, most other people's perspectives that you might have heard. So first, just a little bit about, about Korea. In fact, it was a bit of a misnomer that I spent my first year in Korea. It was more like Seoul and Suwon. The uh, reason for that is, is in the scrap behind me. Can anybody guess what that is? Three bars? Yes. And what do they represent? Blue? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually the average amount of hours worked per worker in the following countries. So Canada is 1727. Korea is 2256 hours per year. So that's about 30% more than Canada. Yeah, it's a country of workaholics, so go me. Uh, so I spent most of my time in Seoul and Suwon because that's the head of where, uh, where Samsung in Korea is located. Uh, one of the stories I had from working with in a country of workaholics is on one of the projects we were on, uh, one of the ladies was pregnant. And she wasn't like three months, like yay for me, let's go celebrate, I'm pregnant. She was like seven months where her depth was probably equivalent to her height. So she was severely uh, pregnant. <laughs> I don't know if that's really the right term, but you, you all understand. I mean, you can picture it. Um, it's exactly she would, she would work. She would work with everybody. The, the part of her project that she was working on was like the T-Mobile, my fave stuff. It was behind schedule. We had to hit the release. And she was literally working till 4, 5, 6 in the morning every night, like with everybody else. And I've never seen that happen in any other country. So for me, that was pretty impressive. Uh, the LG facilities have bunk beds, they have a dormitory on the fourth floor, so you can always jump up there, grab a, a little bit of sleep, and come back to work. Uh, it's also really crowded, uh, as you see in the market. These are the relative populations of Metro Seoul, which is the blue circle, to Canada, which is the big red circle. Wow. So it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty close. So naturally there's a lot of traffic. The way that I, that I ended up getting around after spending about uh, three hours a day in a taxi is I, I bought myself a scooter, which really reduced, and uh, hey, that's a pretty awesome scooter, I think. So. Everybody agree? Yeah. Yeah, pretty nice. Uh, so what, what was nice about driving in, in Seoul is that even though they have, you know, they have lights, they have signs, they have uh, all sort of traffic indications, the only rules that I could really discern that matter is that you shouldn't hit something smaller than you. So a truck shouldn't hit a car, a car shouldn't hit a motorcyclist, a motorcyclist shouldn't hit a bike, and a bike shouldn't hit a person. So you have a lot of freedom, you can go through red lights. Um, I don't know, do any of you read Japanese? Anybody read Japanese? So this is actually a vanity plate that came with the motorcycle when I bought it. It just says Tokyo Bike in Japanese. It's not a real plate. So I was never licensed, I was never insured. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went through police checkpoints, I, I drove on the sidewalk, and nobody, nobody really gave a damn. So that was pretty interesting. It was also a really enjoyable part about driving that. Uh, it's pretty advanced in some ways. This is the download speed, and if you notice, this is only faster than 83% of Korea. So there are places where it's considerably faster, your internet connection. I've also seen guys driving this. I mean, it makes the Segway look like a, a little toy. I don't, I don't know what this is, but it's like at a Blade Runner. It's, it's the coolest <laughs> mode of getting around I've ever seen. It's basically, you have, a motor, you have a motor here, you have little controls there, and you just drive with traffic. So that was pretty cool. But they're also pretty behind in other ways, like gender bias. Yeah. Uh, right when I got to Korea, we had a Korean engineer that was working on my team. And we had a business meeting, so we all went into the boardroom. And then what I didn't know was one of the business guys had asked the, the girl engineer to stop working and go prepare tea and coffee and bring it into the boardroom for everybody. So that was, a, that was the first time I saw that, and then she didn't have to do that anymore. So I figured it's part of the perks for working for a foreign company is you don't have to uh, put up with that anymore. While I was there, I managed to learn to read. I don't know if anybody here reads Hebrew. I do a little bit, so it sort of helped me out because it follows the same basic, uh, the same basic pattern that you have a consonant that's embellished by vowels. So what you have here is a sound for like M or L, R, uh, J, G, K, and N, and these are the vowels. So when you put them together, here you have something that says moon. So you have the M with the U followed by the N, and each little block is actually a, a, a syllable. So here, for example, it's Gim Chi. So you have a G with the I followed by the F. And it was really useful because finally when I go into the, well, when I was walking around, obviously it really helped me out. I could read, Athlete's foot. <laughs> <laughs> Cafe pas, Pascucci. So that was, really, that was really useful. And then I had sort of an epiphany when I finally learned all this and I walked into the coffee shop and I could finally read, ah, Americano. Okay. Uh, this is a cafe latte. So it was really, 
Interesting, that was all just phonetic English after all, so I'm not sure how useful it finally was. Also, business meetings are a little bit different there. So this is actually the one of the ending photos of a business meeting. This guy, we were doing a, a UI engine, and this guy was selling uh, hardware accelerators. So this was our first business meeting we had together around three in the morning, uh, and he, he was on the floor drunk. And beyond, being, <laughs> beyond being on the floor drunk, his shoe came off. <laughs> Somebody so drunk that his shoe actually came off. I took a photo of it. I'm like, this is a photo. <laughs> So that's what I learned about doing doing business in, in Asia, actually, is that you know, you're meant to get drunk because your senses get lower, and then they know whether they can trust what you're saying or not. So if you're not drinking, people will criticize you and say, how come you're not drinking? Are you trying to hide something from us? So that was a really interesting thing, and that was a really interesting meeting. So finally, I'll just leave you with the last words that were the most useful for me, is uh, Mikju Hanaj Seo, so one beer, please. Thank you.